Remember where we left off in section 4.1, we had just learned how to graph your basic sine function and cosine function, and we did that by plotting a bunch of points, which is not a very efficient way of doing things. So what we want to go back and review very quickly is what the graph of the function y equals sine x looks like. So remember, something important happened on the graph every pi over two radians. So I'm gonna mark off my axis like we did before, zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi, and let me go a little bit on the left of the origin, minus pi over two, minus pi. So something important happened on the sine graph every pi over two radians. We had a high, a maximum, a middle point, and a minimum point. And remember, the maximum and minimum happened at minus one and one, which does not, should not surprise you because we learned the range of the sine function is between minus one and one. And so remember, the original sine graph like this crosses the y-axis at the origin. And as we head to the right, the sine graph increases. So when you go to the right, the graph is going to go up. So you have a high at pi over two, a middle, a low, and a middle. And if we continue back in the uh, left direction, we have a low and a middle. And then remember, the sine graph isn't, doesn't consist of line segments. It consists of a smooth curve, so something like this. Okay. And again, the arrows do not mean the graph goes up forever. That means the graph just continues in this same pattern. <clears throat> so remember, every pi over 2, something important on the sine graph occurs, a high, a middle, or a low. And the original sine graph crosses at 0, 0. And when you head to the right of that point, the graph goes up. So that was your basic uh, sine graph. Now, we also did the same thing with cosine. So let me sketch the exact same uh, setup we had before. So something important happens every pi over 2. And just like the cosine graph, the sine graph had a range of minus one, minus one to one as well. Okay? But remember last time we saw the cosine graph crosses the y-axis at the point zero, one. Cosine of zero radians is one. And that, that's a high, and so the, the next points, important places are middles, and the next ones are lows. And we'll just continue that same pattern that we just did with the sine graph. And the graph is a nice smooth curve like that. Okay, so to construct the cosine graph, we don't have to plot a bunch of points. Just remember the cosine graph, the basic cosine graph, something important happens every pi over two radians. On the y-axis, the cosine graph crosses at zero, one. That's a high, and so the next places are middles, and you can continue from there. Okay, so something we learned with the sine and the cosine graph last time was that it has a repeating pattern, as you can see. And that we define the period of the graph to be the shortest interval of x values for which the graph repeats. So for example, if you go from 0 here, 0, to 2 pi here, that distance right there is distance of 2 pi. And notice the graph repeats. You're at a high, and then you're back at a high again, and you would continue from here, high to a high again. Notice the next high would appear way over here at 4 pi because zero to two pi is, uh, is the period. You're gonna have another high once again at four pi and then another one at six pi. So that was the period. The period for the sine graph is, is the same, it's also two pi. We also discussed the amplitude. Remember the amplitude for the sine and cosine graph, it's how high are the hills and how low are the valleys when you measure from the middle. So when I say the middle here, it's the, that, uh, the x axis here. So how high are the hills, one, and how low are the valleys, one. So the amplitude of your basic sine graph and your basic cosine graph is one. That's the amplitude. Now remember where you find the amplitude. The amplitude is the absolute value of the number being multiplied by the trig function. Now be careful. Don't say it's the number out front. It's the number that's being multiplied by the trig function. And you take the absolute value. And we're going to do an example in a minute. And remember the other thing we discussed is if you take any function, this is true no matter whether you're in a, a trig class or not. If you take any function, say y equals x squared, and you multiply that by a negative one, y is minus x squared, 
Remember what that does to the graph. The graph of y equals x squared is your basic parabola through the origin. And y equals negative x squared is a reflection of that across the x-axis. So you just reflect that graph of about the x-axis and that's the graph of minus x squared. That property is true for any function. It's going to be true for our functions in this section when we uh, change the graph of sine and cosine. Okay, so let's do an example. In your notes, you see the first example is y is 3 sine x. And it says graph this over one period interval. I, I'm going to ask you to identify uh, properties that we're changing. So notice here, the 3 is being multiplied by sine x. So that means the amplitude is 3. And ask yourself, do, are we going to reflect this graph about the x-axis? Okay, the answer is no, because the coefficient in front of the sine x is positive 3, not negative 3. So you don't have to write no reflection. I, I, I'll only write it if there actually is a reflection. Okay, so let's sketch the graph of this function. Okay, uh, if, you, if you look at the graphs we did before, think about an entire period of sine or cosine consists of four little pieces. Okay, so from, what, for example, the sine is from low, uh, middle to high, from high to middle, middle to low, and low to middle. That's four pieces, okay? <clears throat> so I'm going to, uh, for one period, we only need four pieces. So I'm gonna just do what I did before. Zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. So those have four, in, four little intervals here. One, two, three, four. That makes up one entire period. I don't care if you go four pieces to the right or four pieces to the left or three to the right and one to the left, or three to the left and one to the right, or two to the right and two to the left. It, it doesn't matter to me which way you do it. Just get four consecutive, consecutive pieces. Okay, so the amplitude here is three, and so our range is going to be from minus three to three. Okay, and then you ask yourself at this point, what does the original sine graph do on the y-axis? Well, the original sine graph crosses at zero, zero. And as we head to the right, the graph is going to head up. So we have a high here, a middle, a low, and a middle. And there's your graph of y equals the three sides. Okay. Now, this graph by itself may not be that useful, but don't mess up your notes. Uh, don't, add, don't add this to it. What does the original sine graph look like compared to this? Well, the original sine graph crosses 0, 0, but notice it, its high point, the original sine graph crosses at 1, and then down here at minus 1. So I want you to see the original sine graph looks like the blue here. Okay. So you can see that uh, the, what we've done here, we've done the multiplying by 3 did a vertical stretch, change the amplitude from 1 on our original graph to 3 on this one. Okay, so that's our first example. So the next example in the notes is y is negative two cosine x. Okay, so I want you to do the exact same thing we did before. Let's identify, let's identify uh, the property here. So the amplitude of this graph is two. Remember, it's the absolute value of the coefficient. So we're multiplying by cosine x by negative two, the amplitude's the absolute value of that number. But what does this negative being multiplied tell us here? Here we're going to reflect about the x-axis. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so with that in mind, we can sketch the graph of negative two cosine x. But notice here the amplitude is going to run, the range is going to be from minus 2 to 2. And again, every pi over 2, something important happens. So just for a variety, I'm going to go 2 to the right and 2 to the left. So pi over 2, pi, minus pi over 2, minus pi. And you ask yourself, what does the original cosine graph do on the y-axis? The original cosine graph crosses at 0, 1 but the amplitude we have changed to two, and there's a reflection about the x-axis, so that's gonna reflect down here to the point minus two. 
So that's a low. And on either side, you're gonna have a medium, a middle place, and then you're gonna have a high. Okay. So notice what I did, I traced, I chased what the point of the high point normally uh, that would happen on the original cosine graph where it went. So the original cosine graph crosses at zero, one on the y-axis. The amplitude in this problem got changed to two. And because there's a negative coefficient in front of the, the, the cosine function, you reflect that over the uh, x-axis, which puts me at minus two. So that's a low, and then you have middles and high. So that's the graph of that. Okay, let me pause, let me stop this here, because the screen is very dark. Okay. Okay, so let's do the next, oh, there's a, uh, five properties we're going to change on these graphs, and we have discussed uh, uh, two of them so far. So the number up front gives you the, the uh, either a reflection or not and changing the amplitude possibly. Okay. So the next property is we're going to look at functions of the form sine bx or cosine bx. Okay, so for, for these, the number b here, notice that is being multiplied by the angle. So it's not multiplying by the trig function, it's multiplying by the angle, so bx. Now, that affects the period, okay? So in both of these examples here, the period is 2 pi divided by that number b. So whenever you multiply the angle by a, a constant, and here we're assuming the b is greater than zero. You know, uh, whenever you multiply the angle by a constant, it affects the period in this way. The period is not the number b. The period is 2 pi divided by that b. Okay, so notice when we change the amplitude, it's a vertical stretch. When we change the period, it's a horizontal stretch or a squish. Okay, so that's what's going to happen when we uh, have this number b in front of the x. Notice in our original example, when we, if we just have, say, sine x, Notice b here is 1, right, 1x. One and so notice what, according to this formula, what would the period be? It'd be 2 pi divided by b. b is 1, and 2 pi over 1 is 2 pi, which is the period of sine x, okay? So the formula works even on our original case. Now you may ask yourself, where is this 2 pi coming from? That's the original period of the sine graph and the cosine graph, okay? So it's 2 pi, the original period divided by b. Okay, so let's do an example. So the next example in your notes says sketch the graph of y is cosine 3x. So just like before, I want to go ahead and identify everything here. And so amplitude here, well, the coefficient of 3x, of, uh, sorry, the coefficient of cosine here is 1, so the amplitude is 1. And notice the, co the number in front of cosine, the coefficient is, is positive, it's positive 1. So there's no reflection. And now what about the period? Well, according to our formula right here, the period is 2 pi divided by b. So it's 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x, which is 3. Okay, so that's the period. Now one extra calculation I'm going to throw in here that we didn't do before is I mentioned earlier that when you have the, the one period, we had a period of 2 pi, we chop that up into four equal pieces. Okay, we didn't do that before because it was always just uh, pi over 2, pi over 2, pi over 2. But now that we're changing the period, we have to add in this extra calculation. So what I'm going to call is pieces. Notice it's spelled P-I-E-C-E-S, not P-E-A-C. Uh, I'm going to take one-fourth of the period. I want to chop this interval into four pieces. So I'm going to take a fourth of the period. So in this example, it's one fourth times two pi over three, which is two pi over 12. Remember to multiply fractions, you just multiply across. And two pi over 12 simplifies to pi over six. Okay, so that's my pieces calculation. <coughs> okay, so to sketch the graph, uh, the amplitude of this graph is one, so the range is gonna be from minus one to one, no change there. But notice here, 
uh, the pieces, this tells me how often I need a tick mark. Before it was pi over two, but we've changed the period, so now we're gonna need a tick mark every pi over six. So if I start building at zero, if you move one piece away from zero, well, one piece is pi over six, that takes me to pi over six. Now, if you add another piece, you're adding another pi over six. So this is one pi over six. You add another, you're at two pi over six, but two pi over six simplifies to pi over three. And if you add another pi over six to that, I have one pi over six, two pi over six, that'll put me at three pi over six, but three pi over six is pi over two. Now if I do that one more time, one pi over six, two pi over six, three pi over six, you add one more pi over six, you're at four pi over six, but four pi over six is two pi over three. Notice I have four pieces, one, two, three, four. So if you've done the arithmetic correctly, from zero to two pi over three, four pieces should be your period, uh, and it is, okay? I cannot tell you how many times on a quiz or a test, I've had students tell me the period is one thing here, and then when they sketch their graph, the period is something different, All right? So once you get your four pieces, make sure the distance from here to here, your four pieces, matches your period. That's a common, common mistake. Okay, so now let's sketch the graph. So once I have my numbers in place, I always ask myself, what does the original cosine graph do on the y-axis? The original cosine graph, y equals cosine x, crosses the axis at zero, one. Notice we didn't change the amplitude in this problem and we didn't reflect, so that's still gonna be up here at zero, one. So that's a high, middle, low, middle, High, middle, low, middle, high. Be careful that you don't skip over one of your important places. And so we have that. So that's the graph of that. Now again, don't mess up your graph. Right? So once you get that, just leave it alone. But a graph by itself like this doesn't really tell you that much. But it, suppose I sketch the graph of cosine x in here, just like I did before. So the original cosine graph crosses at zero, one, but that's the high. Now the middle on the original cosine graph is at pi over two right here. So the original cosine graph does that. So now that, now that they're up there together, you can see the difference. So what we've done is we've taken the original cosine graph, the blue graph, and squished it in. We've made the period shorter. We divided by three and made the period shorter. So that was a, a, a horizontal uh, shrink, okay? So let's do another example. It's getting a little bit more complicated each time. So the next example is y is negative 5 sine 4x. Okay? Okay, so like before, we want to go ahead and um, do the identifying. Uh, go ahead and go ahead and pause your computer, uh, pause the video, and see if you can do the identifying. Remember, amplitude, uh, reflection or not, period, and then do the pieces uh, computation. See if you pause the video and see if you can do that, and then I'll do it and see if we get the same thing. Okay, now that you've tried that, let me do the identifying. So the amplitude here is five. Remember, it's the absolute value of the number multiplied by the trig function. And there is a reflection about the x-axis because the coefficient in front of sine is negative. The period is two pi divided by the number being multiplied by the x. Notice that's a four here. So it's two pi over four. If you simple, simplify the fraction, you get pi over two. And then for the pieces, remember you take one fourth of the period. And again, the multiply fractions, you multiply across. The period here is pi over eight. Okay, now we're ready to sketch the graph. So since the amplitude is five, I know my range is gonna go from minus five to five. And something important happens every pi over eight. So I'm gonna start building from uh, zero. 
And if I add a pi over 8, that puts me at pi over 8. If I add another pi over 8, pi over 8 plus pi over 8 is 2 pi over 8, which is pi over 4. Just to be different, I'm going to move back and then to the left. But it's going to be the same numbers I got, just negative. So there's negative pi over 8 and negative pi over 4. Notice I have 1, 2, 3, 4 pieces. And from minus pi over 4 to pi over 4 is a total distance of 2 pi over 4, which simplifies to pi over 2, which is what the period was supposed to be. So our calculation is correct. And again, once I have my, my graph labeled on the x and y axis, then I always ask that same question, what does the original sine graph do on the y axis? The original sine graph crosses the y axis at 0, 0. And so this one will too. Now remember, the original sine graph from that point when you head to the right, the graph goes up. But here we did a reflection. So this time when we head to the right, the graph is going to go down. So we have a middle here, this is a low, that's a middle, middle, low, middle, high. So that's the graph of negative 5 sine 4x. And again, don't mess up your picture. But if you were to sketch the original sine graph with this one to see what changed, the original sine graph crosses at 0, 0. And when you go to the right, it heads up. But notice at the next point, the high point, that pi over 2, which is double that, which would be way out here. So the original sine graph does this. Right? And so notice, <laughs> notice what it's done. It's, uh, well, and I cheated too. I just lied. The original sine graph doesn't have an amplitude of 5, it has an amplitude of 1. So way out here at pi over 2, it's only going to go up to 1, look like that. So notice what this graph has done, uh, the, the black graph here. It's taken the original sine graph, what I have in blue, it's stretched it out and squished it in. Okay, so that's, that's what that graph is. Okay, so we have one more to go in this section. I hope you realize I'm doing the same thing over and over and over again, just like almost every problem we've done in class. And you have to remember the steps. Just follow the steps. Okay, so this last one is y is negative 3 cosine of 1 half x. Okay, so uh, again, pause the video and see if you can do all the identifying, and then I will do it, and we'll see if we get the same thing. Okay, now that you've had a chance to do it on your own, the amplitude here is 3 because the number being multiplied by the cosine function is negative 3, but you take the absolute value. There is a reflection here about the x-axis. Now, you have to be careful with this computation. The period is 2 pi divided by the coefficient of the x. Notice x is being multiplied by 1 half. And so if you take 2 pi and you divide by 1 half, but that calculation would be 2 pi times 2 over 1 to divide by a fraction, you invert multiply, and you get 4 pi. Okay, so watch out when you're dividing. You're not multiplying by a half, you're dividing by a half. Okay, and then the last calculation is the pieces, and remember to do that, you take 1 fourth of the period, and a fourth of the 4 pi comes out. So the work here is this funny calculation here that when we actually do the graph, then we don't have to deal with the fractions. But to, to do the calculation here, you have to be careful with the, with the dividing by a fraction. Okay, so let's sketch the graph here. Uh, the amplitude is 3, so the range is from negative 3 to 3. Uh, something important happens every pi. Um, again, I'll, I'll go 3 to the right, so 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 1 to the left, just to do some variety. Again, I don't care which direction you go, just get four pieces. Notice I have 1, 2, 3, 4 pieces here, 4 intervals, and notice the total distance from minus pi to 3 pi is a distance of 4 pi, which is what I said the period is going to be. Please check that. And then you ask yourself, what does the original cosine graph do on the y-axis? The original cosine graph crosses at 0, 1, but we changed the amplitude to 3, so we're up to 3. And then we did a reflection, which puts that point down here at negative 3. 
and that's a low, and so I have a middle here, and a middle here is a low, middle, high. Okay, and that was the last, last problem in this section, so hopefully that'll get you through the homework. So start working on, on that, and uh, hopefully I'll get the next video done soon. <laughs>